Hello everyone, my name is Kiva and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I normally give you interior design advice, but today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I don't know about you, but all over YouTube I see these glorious before and after videos of these makeovers. They're like, I did it in five minutes and it looks like this and I now have like a million dollar property from all these little things that I did. But in reality, these products take a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of money. So in today's video, I kind of want to walk you through a project I'm working on in my own home. So I do want to let you know there are so many changes going on in our space our living room the one that you kind of found me for it's not gonna look the way it looks anymore that's one change that's coming but today I want to focus on our primary bedroom so our primary bedroom is probably the room that has been the most neglected in our home. And let me tell you why. Well, when we moved in, it was this horrible, horrible color. It was Worldly Gray by Sharon Williams. And otherwise the color is not bad, but because we have such poor lighting in our room, because we're somewhat underground, it just always felt like a cave. So no matter what we did, it just felt kind of blah. Like there's no other way to describe it. And it, it left me feeling so uninspired. Every time I wanted to film in there, it was kind of lackluster. Anytime I did anything, it was just kind of wrong. So we decided that we were going to fully transform our primary bedroom but we wanted to do it slowly and we wanted to do it confidently and that means doing it slowly and we wanted to think about where we wanted to splurge and where we wanted to save so today we're going to kind of walk through that entire process where we started where we're going um, and all that good stuff so that you kind of have like an insight into what it's actually like to design a space when you have budget in mind when you actually need to continue living in the space and when you want to choose a design that's timeless even with all of these design trends kind of swaying you in all the different directions so first things first if you've been here since day one you know that we got the cloud bed from restoration hardware and that was kind of at the beginning of like my youtube career and we love that bed it is an amazing bed but something i was not good at at the beginning and again this is all a process was space planning i didn't even think about space planning i hadn't gotten really into interior styling interior design i hadn't taken any courses yet so we bought this bed which is magnificent it really does feel like a cloud but frankly it was just too big for the room as you guys can probably tell and some other things were off the art was too high and it just kind of felt sterile you know and honestly I like a sterile home that's that's what we really enjoy here but it was too sterile it was giving me like hospital vibes in a way that I didn't want like I only want the hospital vibes when I'm going to the doctor so we kind of went to the drawing board and said what design style resonates with us you know the modern organic is in you have the Hollywood glam you have this you have that but I kind of found that all of those design styles that were trending weren't resonating with me or my wife at all and it was kind of difficult for me right because of course I'm so good <laughs> that sounds vain but I know how to help people accomplish their design styles and help them find their design styles but when it comes to myself I kind of struggle a little bit because it was like I want to do something you know that is timeless right so what does timeless design mean so when we really sat down and thought about it we actually decided that we wanted a canopy bed and then you're like a canopy bed do you live in a castle I wish I don't live in a castle I wish but that was kind of the starting point for our entire design process but even before that what we needed to do was some space planning but I think the best way to kind of talk through all of this is to actually go in the room give it a look and kind of talk through where we're going and what I've purchased so far so let's head in there so the very first step was actually painting our our bedroom so like I said it used to be worldly gray and the entire house used to be worldly gray but we actually decided to paint it all white and I made that decision because one white is timeless two when we move um, we don't have to paint for like the next people who live here because everyone loves white um, and three I like the color white right so <laughs> those are three really good reasons in my opinion but this is our bedroom so the first upgrade that I made and again I'm just gonna walk you through everything so this is gonna be a long video so get your popcorn or you know whatever you like to snack on so the first update was actually putting this keypad on our bedroom door now you might say Kiva that's such a silly thing well I'm paranoid and I don't know I just kind of it just made me feel better right I don't know I was one of those kids who grew up thinking there was a monster under my bed well maybe there's a monster in the hallway so I added this keypad on here and I just absolutely love it it really gave me an elevated experience now when you come into our bedroom the first thing you see is this painting and you're probably saying this painting is a little bit too low so I had this idea to actually do a gallery wall here so what I've done is I've actually commissioned artwork from some of my favorite artists and they're all going to go in this hallway and since we have such tall ceilings I think the ceiling right here is at least 14 feet having art at just eye level like right here when you come in the room you're just missing so much wall it's like it's all there what, why aren't you using it so I'm doing 36 by six, 36 is, and there's one here and there's gonna be one stacked on top. And I'm gonna have six of them total going down this wall and I'm so excited. You guys know me because my name is DIY with KB. 
And I do like to DIY something. So as we go further in the room, you'll actually see some art that I am making, but this wall is just going to be dedicated to a few of my favorite artists. So this is Samuel Perry art. I found this really fantastic artist over on Instagram. And if you want to know more about him, be sure to check out actually last Thursday's video because I did a whole video on some of my favorite artists and stuff, but I wanted to have black um, and then any other colors. My idea for this gallery wall was to have black and white as the base colors, but the artist could use their creative liberty beyond that. So he had black and then there's blue and yellow in this. I have another one that's gonna have black and green. The artists, they can do any color. Black and white don't even have to be the predominant colors. They just kind of have to exist in the paintings. So I'm really excited to see all of the creativity come to life. And to elevate all of these art pieces, I obviously wanted to add picture lights. And I used to have these other ones from Amazon, but I found these ones and they're magnetic, right? So you can actually take them down and charge them via USB instead of batteries. I don't know. Those picture lights were getting so expensive. So you have these and they attach like this and then they have a remote but they also have something on the side so this is going to go on every single row to kind of highlight the artwork and add some lighting here in this hallway so i'm super excited about that and i guess you could use this you could even like stick it to the other side of your cabinet i guess if you want because you don't have to use this but i'm excited about these um, from amazon because i really wanted something that was a little bit <laughs> easier to use but let's explore the bedroom a little bit more so this is what our bedroom looks like right now. You can hear that there's a huge echo and that's because we don't have a rug down yet. So stay tuned for like kind of part two. As the other things come in, I'll continue recording it so you can kind of see my process. But one of the main problems, like I said earlier, with our bedroom is that our bed actually used to be on this wall over here. So this is where the cloud bed was. So when you walked in, you kind of hit the bed and there wasn't room for anything else. And interesting fact, I guess is that our dog is like the worst entity to sleep with ever. He just like kind of kicks you all night long and licks you in the face. So he actually always has to have his own chair with like a dog bed and like a heated blanket and the whole nine yards. So there wasn't really a good place for his chair. Um, and so that actually motivated an entire design switch. And I also wanted there to be a place where I could sit down and babe could sit down and we could kind of just enjoy our bedroom a little bit more. So we wanted a smaller bed. So instead of having our bed over here, we decided that our bed would actually go over here. So right now as you can see we don't actually have a bed frame because it's coming on Tuesday and I'm so excited for it but we decided to go with a um, wrought iron canopy bed because we wanted something that was very traditional but also with like a contemporary flair. So right now we have an adjustable base because that's going to actually sit inside of our canopy bed and it allows us to kind of sit our bed up and down um, so that if you're watching TV in bed or you're reading in bed you don't have to lay entirely back. It's pretty much like hospital chic. So that's what we have and it was kind of important to us for our elevated experience. It worked with our cloud bed, it's going to work with our new bed. Since we're getting a canopy bed, I also wanted to have curtains, right? Because those are very typical with the canopy bed, but I wouldn't want them actually going over the bed because since it's going in this nook, I felt like it was actually going to make the ceilings feel a little bit lower. So I wanted to actually add curtains on this back wall and kind of cover it up. What I ended up doing is I actually found curtains from Ikea. So these are the new black Sanellas from Ikea. And I put them up using this really cool track from Amazon that you actually just use adhesive to attach it to the wall and instead of um, nails and it has done an amazing job. I just have four Sanellas up here on this track. They've been up for about a week now. They're not pulling, they're not anything, even though we're sitting up against here right now without a headboard. So I'm absolutely obsessed and then I have to give them a good steam, but this is going to kind of be a backdrop to the bed and I'm really excited about that because you'll kind of get that nice romantic feel without having to have curtains on your bed um, because I just didn't want that. I felt like we were gonna run into them. We actually used to have a canopy bed and in the middle of the night when I'd have to get up and go to pee, I would try to get out of the curtains and it was like a whole ordeal so I wanted to add them here. So now that we're in the bedroom I thought it'd be good to kind of do a haul and make the bed and kind of show you all the nitty-gritty details because again we see those transformations and the bed looks fantastic but how do you make the bed look fantastic? I'm gonna kind of show you my process. So something that I got for this room um, were some really fun pillows so you guys know me I don't like color. I like color in my artwork. I don't like color on my like basic things because I feel like when I buy something that is uh, colorful, I end up regretting it and I'm not gonna return it, right? So I'm stuck with something that isn't really versatile from my home. So since I wasn't going to add color, I wanted to add some fun patterns and textures. So the first thing I did is I actually picked up some pillows. So these are the pillows that I picked up. These are the Graffito pillows by Kelly Wurstler. So I love Kelly Wurstler. I think her design style is super popular right now, but I am really big on kind of not 
having my home look like everyone else. I think it used to definitely look like everyone else's and now that I'm trying to find my own style, I kind of want it to be a little bit different. But I just fell in love with these pillows that are somehow covered in dust because I dragged them all over the floor <laughs> when I got them. But these are the Kelly Worsler pillows. They're the graffiti pillows. They look like that um, wallpaper that's really popular right now. So I got three of these in 26 by 26. And I really love this company brand that I bought it from because you can see they're actually pretty rigid. When I hold it up, it really holds its shape. And so I didn't have to go up a size in terms of that insert, which I really love because that can get super costly. Now to pair with these, I also got this extra large lumbar pillow, which is also from the Little Design Co. And it's heavy, you guys. This pillow is a good seven pounds maybe. You know, uh, a good day at the gym. And I love this pillow because it's an extra large lumbar. So it's 48 inches wide and it really goes the width of the bed. And normally these, these they look, they look too fluffy, if that makes sense. They look too fluffy and they don't really create a shape on the bed, but I absolutely, I'm obsessed with this one. And it actually came with the insert. So that saved me a bit of time and effort trying to find an appropriately sized insert. So that's what's going on the bed, just with kind of like basic white bedding and a black throw. You see, I just <laughs> kind of throw things around because I don't really know where to put anything quite yet. But something else I wanted to show you over here before we started making the bed and kind of getting things together is this painting. So I have wanted this painting forever. Um, it was one of the first pieces of art that I really fell in love with and I actually had it commissioned. So I had it commissioned by this person, their name on Instagram is Art Market Studio and they made this roar shark piece of art that I'm in love with because I really enjoy psychology. Um, I really care passionately about mental health and I kind of wanted an ode to that in the house. So I got it with this painting. So I put this up on the wall, but everything else going on over here, it, it's not staying. It's not even styled. We have these Studio McGee lamps. They're not staying. We got other lamps. Um, so they're just here right now. I have my handy dandy steamer and you guys this is the best steamer on the planet. And then we do have the Brock dresser over here, which is definitely staying. It is from our house, not our house, our house, the store. Um, and it's nice, very simple, black and gold. It used to be in our guest room, but I stole it out of there because I really wanted it. Um, but that's kind of what we have going on in this corner. I actually want to talk a little bit more about art because I'm actually doing some DIY art for the bedroom. So I did commission a ton of art um, because I really do want to support some smaller artists, but I wanted something particular and I couldn't figure out where to find it. So I decided to make it, but this was the art piece I made. I was just kind of relaxing and I was like, I really love the shapes that I have going on and the clean lines. And I wanted to add more colors to the room. And you're like, Kiva, that's black and white. Yes, thank you. I know that. So I'm doing them in different colors. I'm doing a green and gray and blue. And then this one and brown and brown. So they're not the most vibrant colors, but we are adding colors but I'm making all of these, they're in size 36 by 36, and they're kind of just gonna sit up against this wall, and the lines aren't gonna look the same. It's going to be fun. It's gonna be fun, that's as fun as I get though. <laughs> so those are gonna go up on the wall, and in addition to those, I'm going to flank them on either side with these really cute candlesticks. So I found these on Z Gallery. They're $50, but they're actually on sale right now, um, and they're gonna go on either side of these artworks and I'm just going to put some LED candlesticks in here. So I, I picked up these sconces and they're gonna flank that um, DIY artwork that I'm making. And it's just going to go on either side because that's what flank means. So I don't know why I said that. And I'm gonna stick them in here like so. Um, and I wanted to do this because I didn't trust myself with real candles. Zero percent, zero percent because I would have I would have caused a problem. But this is actually what they look like. They're so fun um, and you can dim them and make them brighter and they have a timer and all that. They come with a little remote and they're, they're from Amazon as well, but they're just gonna kinda set up like this. I'm so excited. Uh, is it crooked? I bet it is. Am, oh, I, hold am I holding it crookedly? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. So fun, I love that. What's wrong? It was crooked. <laughs> it was crooked, but anyway, I love these, but I don't know if they're gonna flank this artwork, so don't tell babe, she's behind the camera now, right now, like what are you talking about? So I also got this massive colorful piece made, or I didn't get it made, but I found it on Instagram, and it actually is coming from the Netherlands, and it's huge, and it's beautiful, and it has blue and brown, and all the colors in the world on there. So I, initially these were meant to flank that, but I'm not sure that's gonna happen now, so I'm kind of just like hanging out with these. But I feel like from far away, they look pretty 
realistic. Um, I would never want to put this on my wall because I just don't trust myself. So I'm excited that we have them with a the remote and it works for both of them. So they both come on with the remote. It's fun and look, it moves. I blew this for like a ridiculously long time the other day. But let's kind of talk about the bed now and the chairs. Let's talk about the chairs. Guys, this is so informal. I hope you guys know that like this is what the design process is really like and this is why I want to show you because it always just like, oh, it's all together. No, there's so much planning and going back and forth and wavering and all that goes into the process. So let's talk about the chairs next. So these are the chairs that we decided to go with and look at them. They swivel and the dog really hates the swivel, but I do like the swivel because I can just come and sit down and drink my tea or something because I drink, I drink a ridiculous amount of tea. I still need to get a side table here. I'm really feeling green marble, but my wallet is not feeling green marble. So I'm still thinking about what I want to do here, but a nice little drink table for my tea for the dog and his treats because these are really his chairs. But these chairs are actually from Wayfair and this is actually where we tried to actually save um, because I just didn't feel like we were deserving of really expensive chairs, especially since if the dog were to ever get sick, I wanted it to be on a chair that didn't make me feel upset. <laughs> You know, because those things happen. So we got these boucle chairs from Wayfair. We've had them for about two weeks now, and we really like them. Um, they're very low, but I think that that's cool. It's kind of moody, and it's going to be a really nice contrast to our canopy bed, so you're kind of just going to have to keep your mind open. But right now, I have these pillows on them, which are like a faux crocodile, but I've decided that I hate them. And I hate them because there's just not enough color going on. So let me know down in the comments, what color do you think you should see on these chairs? I think I want a more vibrant pattern. And then I'm thinking about adding over here on the bed, a, a throw that has a little bit of cream in it, you know, to kind of pick up the colors here and then maybe work with something that's going on over here. I'm not sure yet. I probably also buy those pillows from Little Design Co, but we'll have to wait and see. So stay tuned for that. So I'm about to expose all of interior design YouTube right here. So <laughs> now you all know. So something people struggle with when they're making their bed is actually having pillows that look nice and the pillows that they actually want to sleep on because normally the ones that you can act that look nice don't feel comfortable to sleep on. So I found these pillows on Amazon. I think that they're fantastic to sleep on. That's what I sleep on every night. Um, some people agree with me, some people don't, but I adore them because they think that they're right and not a soft, but they still look really nice and full on the bed. But Babe, on the other hand, likes to sleep with a pillow that has one feather. So I like to do a pillow arrangement where her pillow can still exist. So here it is, you guys. I spend how much money on pillows and what is this? What is this? Look at that too. She doesn't even get the nice pillowcases because she, she likes to sleep with that. But I like to do a pillow arrangement where the, bed, the pillow she uses can actually stay on the bed because if you have to move your pillow, then is it really your bed? Okay, so in terms of our bed right now, we have a linen duvet down here because I'll be honest, we sweat, right? And our sleep, things get hot, but it's cold here in Pittsburgh. It was like minus 10 last week. So we have an italic linen duvet down here, nice and thick. But on top, you guys, I cannot stand the wrinkles that come with linen, even though I like to sleep with it. So this is an organic cotton duvet. So it looks linen, but it, only, it has fewer wrinkles. It still does have some wrinkles, but we'll fix that together in a second. But I have the linen one down there, and then I have the organic cotton one folded down twice. And that's how you get that super fluffy look. You can fold them both down twice, but I like to have this here, right? Because I don't want my sheets ever exposed to the elements of the house because I hate dirty sheets. And we're actually gonna do a video soon, kind of talking about seven different types of sheets, so stay tuned for that. But that's kind of how we make the bed. You have the wrinkles here, but it doesn't matter. Then we have the King Loungers from Restoration Hardware. I'm telling you, if you want your bed to look, look, I'm hitting it and it's not going anywhere. It's a resilient pillow. So these King Loungers from Restoration Hardware, I think they're like 80 bucks. Definitely worth it because they're massive. And then I just have my pillows from Amazon as well in front here. Okay, so part of making the bed is also knowing all the little hacks there. So hack number one was to fold down the duvet. Hack number two is chances are your pillowcases are too big either because you have old pillowcases and you got small pillows and you don't want to like pay for smaller ones, which I'm there with you, or they just make them too big. So what you actually just need to do is take the bottom part fold it over top and then fold the top part. I'm not explaining this well, so hopefully you can see. You just kind of fold it down in there so that 
it actually just creates a line here. But you flip it over and you just have this really nice straight line. So you don't get like that extra fluff that you can see on a bed that I think just looks like it just keeps me up at night and I hate it and I didn't know how to fix it, but this is how you fix it. So you get a nice straight line without having to spend any more money on your pillows, but I'm just gonna take this pillow and put it up here and you just wanna have that part that you kind of finessed on the inside because it'll be hidden when you have those other pillows. Now to get these wrinkles out, I'm not gonna do it right now, but what I like to do is I steam it, maybe I'll steam it a little bit for you. And I use a steamer from Amazon that's super cheap because I don't know why it has to be so expensive and it gets all these nice wrinkles out. And then you add a throw to cover up all the additional wrinkles. So there are a lot of layers that happen on the bed and at the middle, at nighttime, this throw comes off and the dog sleeps with it. So it actually gets used instead of just kind of ending up on the floor which most throws through. So now we're going to see these lovely pillows on the bed for the first time. Now, ordinarily, people put these in the back, but I spent so much money on these, I wanna see them from every single perspective, so they're going in the front here. And I'm just taking the middle one, throwing it in the middle. You can chop it, you can not chop it, doesn't really matter. I like to fluff them a bit though, to give them some nice volume. Then this one is going here. You're literally covering up everything else you've spent your money on, so you're like, why am I doing that? But, I don't know, it looks nice. That's a lot of design. And then Babe's gonna put this last one on. Babe, you're gonna have a Babe cameo, everyone. Woo-hoo! Oh, you chopped yours, though. Okay, and then you wanna give them a nice chop, I think. I think they just look a lot more luxe. And they better look Lux again, because we spent a lot of money on them. That's what I say. If you're spending a lot of money on something, it better shine. And if it doesn't shine, send it back to the store. So this is what the pillows look like. A lot of people fold their duvets down even further. But if I fold my duvet down further, then it's on the floor. So I have those three. And then I'm going in with this extra large lumbar on top of this folded down duvet, just like that. And that's kind of it for me. And so the pillows that come off the bed in the middle of the night are these ones, but the other ones just stay on and we sleep with them and they're nice and they prop you up and do everything a pillow needs to do. Good morning, everyone. It is probably like 7.45 in the morning. We have to drop the dog off at the vet, but today is bed delivery day. So we have to move everything kind of about to accommodate the bed because the bed is gonna go back here, but we've had our bed sitting here for the past two weeks because again, we knew we were getting the bed and it was an adjustment period for me. I don't know what's wrong with me, but like moving our bed slightly like resets my circadian rhythm somehow. <laughs> so it took me a really long time to calibrate. Um, so we've had the bed over here. So I'm gonna take all the sheets off and all of that because our bed is from Restoration Hardware and they do put your bed and your adjustable base in there for you, but I wanna make it as easy for them as humanly possible. So we're gonna do that together. And we're just gonna kinda see how the room comes together. Today our lamps are supposed to come, our rug is supposed to come, some of our decorative accents are supposed to come. Today just seems to be the day for all of that. I hope everything does arrive because it did start snowing. Um, but let's get this bedroom together. Okay, you guys, so this is the last look of the bedroom before the bed comes. Now, this is a good opportunity to learn why it was stupid to have the bed over here. As you saw, maybe, when I was cleaning, there's not enough room to do anything, especially since we had the cloud bed. So it extended literally like a foot further on all sides. So it's sticking out to down here and over here. And I don't need to go all the way around the world for you. But it was just too much. Now we can have chairs, we can sit, we can relax. We cannot watch TV because the TV doesn't work, but we can read a book um, or something, which is nice. And I have a very serious urge to steam these for an hour, but I have meetings and <laughs> more important things to do. So I'll steam them later if necessary, but I will tune back in when the bed is getting delivered and anything else. So the rug came, our lamps came, and I'm being really obnoxious and I want to put them down. I don't know if you can hear me because I'm not going to put a mic on because I would definitely break it in this process. So now we need to 
address this art so I need to put this art up on this wall so we're gonna do that together now let's do a little tour so this is our bed you can see we have those windows up there but they show right in our um, purse um, our neighbor's backyard and we were at a party with him once and he said that he can see all of our other neighbors like doing things people do in their bedrooms <laughs> and that I would literally be mortified so we keep it closed so we have no natural light so these up here are light bulbs. So I bought Philips Hue lights to make the light more white. Now these light bulbs are more expensive than anything I've ever wanted to pay for in my life. So hopefully they work. They're not in yet. But freshly made bed. Let's tackle this art. Now I'm doing this by myself because babe is at work and because I'm really, really finicky. So let's see if we can do this together. If I do anything funny, I promise to keep in the blooper because we're all about realistic design here on DIY with KB. And I did a poll and you guys asked for more room transformations. So I'm showing you one in real time. Oh, I didn't have my mic on. Get it together, Kiva. So I ended up changing my shirt because I don't want to film and then you accidentally see my butt and I get in trouble with YouTube. So, these are the paintings, and guys, this is just going to have to be an outfit. Like, I know no one wears green sweatpants with a sweater, but I'm starting trends. What can I say? All right, I'm going to very haphazardly sit this on here so that we can kind of envision what I want. And then, nice. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Now. I have to decide if I'm going to be lazy about this and kind of guesstimate where they should go or if I should measure. The adult in me says that I should measure. The me in me says that I should not measure. Now the green one, I feel like the green one should actually be on top. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Now we need to get a tape measure and whatever. So... That's not how I'm gonna do it because I don't think measuring it really matters because we have that. And for me, it's all about perspective. So I don't want both of the dark ones down here. is finally up I didn't film the whole process I'll put little snippets in but I didn't film the whole process because my camera battery kept dying because it did take me a long time and I also didn't want to accidentally hit the camera because cameras are really expensive but this is what the art looks like up on the wall there has to there's gonna have to be a few touch-ups but that's fine with me and opposite this art there's going to be another wall of art so it's gonna be pretty fun but we just went with geometric shapes and I'll do a little pan for you Yes, that lampshade is crooked because I've not adhered it yet, um, but I'll talk all about that in like the next part. But from the bed view, when you pan, you'll see all of that art. And then when you pan further, you'll see that art and all the mess I've made. And then in the hallway, there will be even more art. So there's a lot of art that's going to be in this space. And I don't have any bright lights on now, but you can kind of tell. We'll come in close here. Brown navy green black add a little bit of color but not too much but the other large painting that's going to be in the space is going to be absolutely massive so stay tuned for that okay you guys that is it for part one of our bedroom transformation we still have a lot of things to come in uh, still a lot to do but i'm happy that things are coming in i really like how things are coming along and I hope that this shows you that this whole process is a process. It takes a long time. You got to splurge some places. You got to save some places. It's not all, you know, throwing dollar bills. Like this is not like a rap music video. This is real life. So come back if you want to see more parts of this. When it's done, we'll do a review. And then we will finally do a full house tour. And when I say full house, I still don't mean the guest room because it's a mess. I can show you my stockpile of stuff if you'd like to, but otherwise we will do a full house of course. So you can see all of the updates we've made and all of the updates that we would like to make long term. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.